Hello, everyone, and welcome to this conversation presented by White House Custom Color. Are you trying to mute me? No, it's just real loud. And I, can't I sold Amazon, but it was $25. <laughs> listening to listen, not listening to respond. Yes. Oh, thank you for that. Well, guys, thanks for joining me on our third session of In Focus, brought to you by White House Custom Color. We're talking about this consumer survey that we sent out and the results that we see that we received from that. Ed Monahan, uh, could you introduce yourself first? We're going to go around. We'll introduce all three. Of you guys will just talk briefly about who you are and and wh where you're coming from, um, and we'll go from there. But Ed, let's start with you. Sure, my name is Ed Monahan. I'm a consultant that supports White House Custom Color. I was with Kodak for 35 years and uh, have just thoroughly enjoyed the professional marketplace and have supported them in strategic planning, market analysis, and in this case, a consumer survey that looked at the questions around portraiture, uh, consumer attitude and behavior and their desires or not for portraiture. And as we know, it's a good news and it is a desire for. Right on. Matt, what about you? Yeah, I'm Matt Hodgman. Um, I am now with White House Custom Color for the last, wow, over two years, uh, full-time now. I am their client success manager. So what that means to everybody is that I get to work with some of the top photographers all across the country, um, working with them on their successes, their challenges, things of that nature. Um, I was a professional portrait photographer for 23 years. Um, so I started back in the film days, transitioned into digital with White House, um, a long time ago, got to know the Handline family and uh, have been in, like Ed was saying, in the trenches. I've been in the trenches with, uh, with photographers and uh, working with them towards um, goals and towards successes, both before and during COVID. So. And my wife, Vicki, <laughs> would you talk about yourself for a second too? I'm Jed's wife. No, um, <laughs> actually, a uh, similar story to Matt in that we've been in the industry. I've been in the photography industry about the same amount of time, a little over 20 years. Um, still doing that full time, but since then have also two little kiddos, but um, really have gone through the transition of film to digital to, you know, becoming a mom, also running a business. Um, to having nine employees to now really scaling back the last few years on purpose to um, be doing a lot more of that work hands-on myself with the clients um, to try to, to not, to work smarter, not hard, harder for just the stage of the business that I'm at. I, I am working full-time, but I'm really um, holding my client's hands every step of the way in the process. And um, that's actually been working out okay for me through this COVID thing because I'm not really looking for big numbers, but I am looking for big dollar sales. Um, so getting those clients still in the door has kind of been my goal these last few months. Let, let's, Ed, let's talk real briefly then too, again, about the survey itself. And can you give us kind of a, a little rundown on what that was again? Yes, that's a, that, that was a, a great question as a lead in, Jed. You know, we set out to learn or discover a couple of key points, you know, in the time of COVID, how has COVID affected what's important to the consumer? Very specifically, family and photo. And is there a change in their spend or sentimentality? Um, how has COVID changed their attitude and behavior when it comes to pro photography, not just the sort of consumer personal picture taking, but, you know, specific and unique to professional photography? What lifestyle changes has COVID had that would require photographers to adjust their products? So we set out to uh, interview enough consumers to get 15 respondents. We were biased towards portrait activity. They had to have purchased a portrait from a pro in the last 24 months. We interviewed 3,000 people more or less to find 1,500. So um, very compelling survey, very compelling data, Judd. So let's start with this um, because it is compelling. And, and here we are in the midst of all of this. And uh, Matt and Vic, this, is, this question will be for you. And Vicki, you start um, with this. So ladies first. We know that like Zoom and e-commerce e type things, are they're here. It feels like they're going to be here to stay even after COVID. Like this is kind of how we're doing things now in a lot of ways. And, it, and it's, going to, it's going to continue afterwards, um, even on the other side. So how do, you, how do you think photographers adapt? And talk about yourself, obviously, and, uh, and just your selling process in particular. 
Uh, I mean, for probably 18 of the 20 years I've been in business, I've been in-person sales. Even when it was film, I was putting a proof photo on a projector on a wall. So I'm a huge believer in in in-person sales. Um, So of course, we have that challenge of people potentially are not wanting or able to meet in person, what does that look like? Um, I am somebody that's somewhat slow to change. I I go about this a little cautiously. I love in-person sales. So I know there's the ability to sell through Zoom um, and other, you know, online ways. I don't want to do it. (laughs) Um, I I love being with my people. I'm an in-person person. person, um, But that being said, I also want to run a successful business. So if that is what it's going to take, I also am open to learning those processes to do that. I have not done that yet, though. I am still meeting my clients in person. you know, following whatever protocols need followed, you know, to be safe and be at a distance, but they are still coming into my studio and that is still my preference. I am going into their home. So um, that being said, I do think it's, I'm probably at a point that I do need to adapt and be available because I, it's only a matter of time till I probably do get a client who wants to do something mm. more in person. And, and as I think about it, there's probably some benefits um, more virtually, more yeah. virtually, I'm sorry. Um, that um, I'm thankful those resources are there. I just have to, you know, go through that door. But my preference would still be to be with my clients in person. What about you, Matt? What do you think? So I personally think that people's acceptability and their, or I should say their willingness to accept a new platform is definitely been accelerated Mm. Uh, light years by COVID. Um, And the people that have really jumped on board doing Zoom meetings, doing virtual sales, doing um, adapting to this new process have been doing really well with it. Mm. Um, I think that moving forward now, you have so many options that have been opened up. So instead of just being, you know, either IPS or gallery, sales, you know, something that's online, that's kind of hands off. Now we have this new hybrid option and several people that I work with on a daily basis are having very, very high numbers as far as dollars coming back off of these sales. Now, these are people that going into COVID understood that they were going to have to shift. Um, one client in particular on the East coast, um, just reached out to me the other day, was super excited, had done a zoom sales meeting, no contact with a client whatsoever for $6,600. Um, and then that product was going to drop ship directly to the client. Um, definitely not taking away from what Vicky said at all, because I am on that same school of thought where I did in-person sales, you know, basically my whole career. And we all know that do that, that that is the way that you make money in this industry. Um, But I think now it does give you the option of uh, flexibility of, you know, Vicki, you can probably comment on this too. You know, you have a great big family group come in and, you know, people are from all over the country and you are able to literally sit in your living room and reach out and work with those people in individual sales now. And it's acceptable. You know, yeah. prior to COVID, you know, I would say to a client, let's set up a Zoom meeting and somebody would say, oh, what's that? Oh, they'd say, <laughs> you know? can you just put the images online? Right. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. live um, near you. Yeah. Right. You know, so now Zoom has gotten to be, you know, like ketchup, you know, it, and we all use it and it is something that is very widely acceptable now and very efficient for everybody. I mean, you know, at White House for all of us, you know, we, we've been working remotely since mid-March you know, and we've been doing it efficiently and effectively. So I really think that this has propelled the um, efficiency of, you know, in-person sales or a hybrid version of that forward. And for the people that are are taking advantage of it now and planning for it, they are having a, a lot of success. Ed, can you talk a little bit about the data that we that we received or that we got from the survey that spoke about how COVID has changed the way consumers are going to spend on family photos? Yeah, Jed, it's a great news story. Um, The data reveals that there is a certain percent of people who are going to spend more. That percent, I believe it's 26, is actually larger than the number of consumers who generally use an independent portrait photographer. So the, the, the target addressable market is growing. The other 
noteworthy thing was as many said spend the same and in light of the pandemic you would think that there would be conservatism fiscal prudence so when we hear people say i'm going to spend no less no more that's good news. In, in light of a perception of time where people would be loath to spend money concerned with unemployment and the economy so i think what we saw and i'll caution all of our listeners this is biased this is uniquely people who have been portrait active in the last right. 24 months so it is our audience it's the people that we cater to and who enjoy and appreciate the value that the professional brings. But I think that the spend on, on both updating family photos and macro in general, is generally good news, more, more than we thought going into it, Jed. Matt, were you surprised by that? I mean, despite the fact that it was biased, we are talking to people that have purchased in the last couple of years, but that was, those are good, those are good stats. Yeah, they're extremely good stats. When um, when we were reviewing that, I can't say that it was surprise. I think it was just joy uh, of seeing you know something that is tangible and and data related. Ed has definitely taught me to to work with data and to you know when you're when you're thinking about things like that to take the emotion out of it and look at what's actually in front of you. Um, I think as photographers, uh, being you know right brain, sometimes it's hard when you have a situation like COVID come up where you're, you're potentially, you know, dealing with challenges that you never thought you'd have to deal with before to get down and to say, okay, well, this is going to hurt because of this, 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 and this. But those are sometimes becoming truths that you're making up for yourself where this is actually data. So Vicki, going for like, this is encouraging news. We've established that it's exciting. It was, it's great to see that. Um, I was, I was a little bit surprised. I also have joy. <laughs> that was a good word for that too. Uh, what does it mean to you, Vic, as, as a business owner, as somebody that, I mean, th this, this is really talking about you pretty directly. What, what are your thoughts about the news that you received and looking at that data from the survey? Um, I think the word I come up with is hope, um, mm. you know, cause I think there was so much fear and there is still fear. So I think to have hope and like, it's definitely not doomsday. Like there is like good stuff out there. There are people who I think on the flip side, maybe people tightened up in some ways, but those who appreciate photography, which is the people mm. in the survey, like they maybe even value it more, honestly. Yeah. Like I've talked to my clients and it's like family has become that much more like they've kind of more important, not more important, but they're realizing the value of that and wanting to capture that. Um, you know, they're working from home, they're spending more time maybe with their kids and just everything has shifted and changed so much. And maybe some layers have been peeled off and it's like, what's important to me? Like people have reprioritized a little bit and looked at their priorities. And if it's family, I, it makes sense to me that those numbers would be what they are like, okay, maybe I'm going to spend my money on this because this is my priority yeah. versus something else they were spending it, you know, on before. And I think that from our business standpoint, um, what we've seen happen, I mean, our numbers and our sales and the sessions we're doing, I mean, really do represent this, honestly, like we still have clients coming in and, and, and seeing the value in the photography and in the portraits and, you know, spending pretty high dollar amounts. So they're there, you know, I mean, they've always been there, but they're still there. They haven't gone away, I guess, you know, they're still there for us. Well, then you were saying you, I wanted to circle back cause I was thinking you were saying you like, you still like to meet with people in person as much as possible. Um, when it, when it, when it can work. Right. So what sort of things are you doing? It made me th think like, what sort of things are you doing to take any sort of precautions or to be uh, ready for anything? Because you don't know, we don't always know beforehand, um, before they book, but then after they book, different people at different age levels and, 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 and their different concerns when they come in. So what sort of things are you doing to cater to that, considering you're having people in? Um, well, I've kind of found that for me, the clients, if people are thinking about photography and doing a session, they're not somebody who's hunkered down in their house, afraid of, COVID. I mean, to the point where like, like they're not going to come in for a session if they're not right. willing to possibly come in for other things. Like that's been my experience. I'm not saying there's not value in potentially doing in-person sales um, through Zoom or something else. But if they're willing to meet with me for a session, then I think, you know, they are, they've so far been willing to do orders. So, you know, we've got masks and we've got hand sanitizers and we're cleaning. Um, you know, I, when we're outside, um, I'm not wearing a mask, but um, I'm distanced from my clients. I, I'm a hands-on person. So I would say typically the way I would shoot, that's shifted. Um, you know, maybe I would be more 
helping somebody and posing them and moving them where it's a little more I'm distanced and mimicking and showing them what I want them to do. And me wearing a mask in studio, I'm distanced from them. That's been hit and miss if I'm in a mask or not. I always have that available. I'm leaving that more honestly up to the clients, you know. Matt, what ways are you aware that people are taking precautions during this time? Well, I mean, uh, of course, everybody is masked up when they're in the studios now. Um, hand sanitizer stations. Um, there are some of my clients that are requiring shoes off in their spaces. Oh. Um, so I think that, you know, as uh, society, we've all become accustomed to these things now, and they have become just the standard the norm, you know, where back in, you know, March, April, we were all kind of trying to figure out, you know, personally, how we felt about this, you know, the, the reaction to being out in public, those types of things where I think now we've kind of settled in and I think you're going to find a pretty standard, um, safety across, you know, the clients that I work with. So, you know, masks and cleaning and sanitizing and, you know, like, um, the shoes off, I can understand that, you know, in a, in a space where, you know, you have people in bare feet, take your shoes off that way, everything stays clean. Um, but you know, as far as the distancing, I mean, it's pretty standard now, um, across the people that I'm working with. Given all of that, I wanted to mention one thing in the survey that we're, we're seeing that a lot of consumers take their pro digital files to consumer locations to get prints rather than printing through a professional lab. How, how do you keep or get most of, if not all of that print order still? And I'll start with you, Vic, again here, um, during the sales session so that, yes, if they do have the digital files, um, um, they're also still printing with and through you. I mean, I haven't changed my pricing structure in that um, we do offer digital files, but they're only as a bonus after they've ordered the mm. prints through me. So it's not really an issue in that they're not getting those files to go print. Like they've already invested in a wall portrait albums and things. Um, and if they hit certain levels, they do qualify for a printable file and it's only printable to five by seven. So I limit the size of that anyway. So I'm not really giving people files to take elsewhere to print large or you know they've already done the investment with well them. and do you think people are mostly interested in digital files in that in that scenario uh like for social media like to put on facebook or something um i think it depends on what who i'm photographing i think high school seniors um that's a big thing that the high school seniors you know want but I, I don't know. Like, I just, I feel like it's something I've kind of stay, have stood firm on. I went through a oh. few years, um, a few years back where I was like, no to digital files. I mean, but that's been years now where it's just, I want to be able to say yes, but it's really as a bonus and it's not something, they know this up front. Like it's not, if someone calls me and they say, you know, I want a session in digital files, I'm probably not the person they're going to book anyway. So it's kind of a non-issue by the time we're doing the in-person sales. So Matt, what, no. what, what are you aware of regarding what people are doing uh, to get to stop that from happening? So what Vicky's talking about is a very popular model, and that's exactly how I, I did it as well. It wasn't something that even showed up on a price menu. It was somebody had to ask about it, and you were required to purchase print first. I just think as photographers, you know, that is what we do to deliver a beautiful final product. Um, but one thing I want to definitely interject here, Jed, is if clients are saying they want digital files, they're not necessarily saying they don't want to print. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're hearing that question, I don't think that we should naturally assume that they're not going to want the print to go with it. And we're selling ourselves short and leaving a lot of money on the table. And, yeah, well, and sometimes we make that an either or, right? When right. really it's a both, it's a both right. thing. Yeah. And we make it an either or, but it's not necessarily. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I think that, you know, like Vicki was saying, you know, we're, I think we're kind of past the point of saying, no, these are not available, you know, because I just think that, you know, you, you'd have a shock and awe look in your client's <laughs> face when you said that that wasn't, you know, how it was going to work. But um, to just sell a file and to have them go print it at, you know, Costco or, you know, someplace like that, that's going to do a terrible representation. That's not an answer either. Right. Another model that I think is cool um, is that, there is a photographer that I know of on the West Coast that does um, 
file sales, but she automatically includes a finished album at no charge in her package. So you're getting the files, you know, you're purchasing the files, but you're getting the album, you know, for free, quote unquote. And then they have a representation of what that file really looks like when it's printed through um, a professional lab and the proper color mm -hmm. and proper profile and everything. That way, if they do go to print it at somewhere that's a consumer level and they call and say, well, this looks terrible, she can say, well, it actually doesn't. Right. You know, it looks right. beautiful. It's just you chose to go to Walgreens, you know, right. or to Costco. Right. You know. right. So they, they have that basis of comparison. Yep. Um, already so that they can see that. I, that's an interesting model mm, too. That is interesting. Um, you know, in conclusion, what sort of uh, words of wisdom or encouragement can you guys offer? Matt, I'll start with you. Just, just moving forward now. Yeah. So uh, completely transparent. Um, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of photographers across the U.S. that are doing extremely well right now. Hmm. I've had a lot of conversations recently with people who are scheduled out so far that they're not exactly sure how they're going to you know, handle the holiday season. Um, and I know that that's due to, you know, potentially having to be shut down for a couple months and things were kind of backed up. Um, it's the, the change in, you know, the time that it takes to go from one session to the next and sanitizing in between and doing your, all your protocols. But that is really great news. You know, people are saying, well, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do my holiday special because right now I'm booked all the way through October and people are still wanting to schedule out. That is a great thing. Um, and I truly think, you know, going back to what you guys were talking about earlier, the need to be with family and friends that COVID has spurred for, you know, most of the population, me included, um, makes you want to purchase things and invest in things that truly are meaningful to you. You know, maybe you're not going to go trade cars now, but you're going to invest in what's important and what has been um, something you haven't had access to potentially for several months, especially if you have elderly parents or grandparents. So I truly believe this is, this is going to be a good news um, fall and holiday season to where you, you know, photographers are going to be booked up as long as they can manage their schedule and keep up with everything. We could see a very, very strong finish to 2020 because of these reasons. Vic, you used the word hope before. Can you expand on that a bit here as we wrap up? Um, yeah. I mean, I think just reiterating some of the things we've talked about, but you know, over the last few months, one of the things that has happened is I've actually had past clients who've already placed good orders with me, even re-reaching out, placing new orders, um, because I think that just really shows where people are at right now. Like they're thinking about, oh man, you know, I didn't do that album or there were those images I, I didn't order and they're thinking about their family. And so I think that, you know, moving forward, that gives me hope that, um, you know, that's kind of the place where people are at. Um, you know, I'm still looking to, I'm not one of those photographers who is booked out through the fall. So I'm listening to you, Matt, thinking I want to talk to them because um, that gives me hope, honestly, like yeah. listening to you say that. That yeah. is not where I'm at. I have good sales and I'm very spread out um, with my sessions, but I'm also homeschooling and doing like, you know, I'm wearing a lot of different hats. So like my busy is different than maybe someone else is busy and it's different than my busy five years ago, busy. So right. I think, you know, just trying to figure out what is it that I can manage, you know, in this new age of how we're doing things and what my life looks like right now. I do have hope though, in that like I've even been playing around with putting a few things online um, with some, like a little giveaway I did from national dog dog day I just did. And we're doing a winner today from that of people posting their photos and the amount of traffic I'm getting from that. Like people are excited. They're wanting to come into the studio. Like there is still just this sense of excitement um, and involvement from people and wanting good photography. And so I feel like moving forward um, for me, I'm going to do a similar thing, even with my families, you know, celebrate family kind of a session for the fall to try to get in some, you know, more sessions and drive some traffic you know, to our, to our sites and get people in. Ed, you, uh, you were a big reason that all this happened. Thanks for, thanks for doing this with us and for us. Um, can you, can you say some final words now as we wrap up the in focus series? 
Yeah, I really love the way Matt and Vicki expressed it with joy and hope. Um, I would say opportunity. And, and I think what Vicki just described, we, we have a, a willing, participating audience who's clamoring and craving what you guys do so well. We need to remind them of the joy that we bring to their lives. I think especially as we get into the holiday season, I think the other thing is that there's a, a desire for normalcy. I think people are looking to find something structural, something stable that kind of, mm. we're never going to be the same as pre-COVID. And, and that, that's both good and bad. But I think there's opportunity. And, and I, we've said it a couple of times, Jed. I think what the data does is it debunks the myth. It's easy to get caught up in woe is me. Everything is digital. No one wants a print. And I'll echo what Matt said. When you hear someone ask, do you sell digital files? Hear that they're asking for an alternative and I like the way you said it, Jed, it's an and world. They want prints and digital. Right. They're not eschewing or foregoing the opportunity to purchase prints. And um, the other thing is, you know, it's an exciting time in this industry. The photographic print is giving way to a more valued and, and more important product, you know, the gallery wraps, the frame prints, the, the wall oh, decor. Right. I think from a photographer standpoint, you know, this is a great time to be in the industry. This is a great time to be responsible and opportunistic to photograph and, and document and chronicle lights most special occasions. You know, that again, to finish, the data says that there are people out there who do not need to have it explained to them why the pro is a superior alternative. They get it. We've just got to get them back in the studio this fall and remind them through the photography, the artwork, and the selling of photography products, why we do what we do and why we do it so well. Well said, and thanks to all of you, really, for doing this. Um, I appreciate your time. I appreciate the efforts. This is good news. I'm excited about it. And, and I hope people watching and listening um, can take uh, a lot of what you said and use it for motivation and inspiration moving forward because this really was good news. Yes. So thanks again. Have a yeah. great day and rest of the week to everybody. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on, Jed. It's great to see you guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching this conversation presented by White House Custom Color on YouTube. Be sure to check out our other content and click that subscribe button right there. Right. <laughs> right there. It's there somewhere. <laughs>